Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to make mathematical observations about some facts we already know about the training process of an artificial neural network. We'll then be using these observations going forward in our calculations for backpropagation. So let's get to it. In our last video, we focused on the mathematical notation and definitions that we would be using going forward to show how backpropagation mathematically works to calculate the gradient of the loss function. Well, now's the time that we'll start making use of them, so it's crucial that you have a full understanding of everything we covered in that video first. Here, we're going to be making some mathematical observations about the training process of a neural network. The observations we'll be making are actually facts that we already know conceptually, but we'll now just be expressing them mathematically. We'll be making these observations because the math for backprop that comes next, particularly the differentiation of the loss function with respect to the weights, is going to make use of these observations. We're first going to start out by making an observation regarding how we can mathematically express the loss function. We're then going to make observations around how we express the input and the output for any given node mathematically. And lastly, we'll observe what method we'll be using to differentiate the loss function via backpropagation. All right, let's begin. The first observation we're going to make is based on our loss function for a single training sample. We're first going to observe this expression here. So this expression represents the squared difference of the activation output and the desired output for node J in the output layer big L. And really this can just be interpreted as the loss for this particular node J within our output layer. So to calculate the total loss of the network for this one training sample, we can sum this square difference for each node j within the output layer. And that sum is going to look like this. So you can see on the left hand side, we just have c sub zero representing the network's loss for a particular training sample. And on the right hand side, we have a sum running from j equals zero to n minus one of that expression that we gave earlier, which is the square difference of the activation output and the desired output for each node j, in this case, within our output layer, big L. Let's go ahead and move on to our next observation. This next observation is going to be in regards to the input that a particular node j within a given layer L receives from the previous layer. So from previous discussions, we know that this input for node j in layer L is the weighted sum of the activation outputs from the previous layer, L minus one. An individual term from this sum would look like this. So we have a weight that is connecting node J in layer L to node K in layer L minus one, multiplied by the activation output for node K in L minus one. That's just one individual term within the overall sum. So the input for node J in layer L would be represented by the sum of all of these terms. And as we know from when we gave our definitions, this is represented by what we see on the left-hand side of our equation, this z sub j superscript L. And on the right-hand side, we have that this is equal to the sum running from k equals zero to n minus one, and this k represents the nodes within the previous layer, L minus one. So the sum is representing all of the weights that are connecting each node K in layer L minus one to node J in layer L. And we're multiplying each of those weights by their corresponding activation outputs from each node K in layer L minus one. Now let's move on to our next observation. This observation is in regards to the activation output. We know that the activation output of a given node J in layer L is the result of passing the input Z sub J superscript L to whatever activation function we choose to use. And this is represented as we saw in our definitions by G superscript L. 
Therefore, the activation output of node J in layer L, which we are representing with the notation A sub J superscript L, is expressed simply as what we see on the right-hand side, where we're passing our input Z sub J superscript L to our activation function for this layer, G superscript L. Now we'll move on to our final observation. This observation is going to show us how we can express the loss of the network as a composition of functions. Recall from our first observation that we made earlier on the loss function that this equation is how the loss is represented for one single input. So if we just wanted to focus on the loss of a single node within the output layer rather than the loss of the entire network itself, then we could do this by looking at a single node J in the output layer L and expressing the loss for this particular node like this. We're just subscripting our term on the left-hand side with a J so that we know that this loss is for one single node J. And on the right-hand side, we just have the square difference between the activation output for node J in the output layer and the desired output for that node, Y sub J. So given this equation here, we can see that the loss for node J is a function of the activation output for this node in our output layer. So then we can express the loss of this node J like this. So here we're just expressing the loss in a function format where we're saying that this loss is just a function of the activation output for this node. And we can see from our definition of the loss function that in addition to the activation output for node J, that the loss also depends on Y sub J. Since Y sub J is a constant though, we only express the loss as a function of the activation output and view Y sub J only as a parameter that helps define this function. And taking it a step further, as we observed in an earlier observation on the activation output, we know that the activation output of node J in the output layer is a function of the input for node J. And we can express this fact with this equation, where we are saying the activation output for node J in the output layer is equal to the activation function G for this particular layer, which accepts the input for this particular node. All right, let's go ahead and scroll a little bit. All right, and then taking it even another step further, the input for node J is actually a function of all the weights connected to node J. And we saw this whenever we made our observation on the input, since the input itself is made up of the weighted sum of the activations from the previous layer. All right, so the way that we can express this input as a function is by saying the input for node J in the output layer L is a function that accepts all the weights that are connected to node J from the previous layer. Recall from our definitions that we represented this collection of weights that connected all the nodes in the previous layer to a specified node J within our current layer as this W here, where we have W sub J superscript big L for our output layer in this case. So to just recap quickly the points that we just made before moving on, we said that the loss of an individual node is actually a function of the activation output for that node, which itself is a function of the input to that node. And that input is a function of the weights that connect all the nodes in the previous layer to this node. So with that, we can bring all of these together and show how our loss function here is actually a composition of all of these functions. And in our discussion here, we've been focusing on the loss for a particular node J within our output layer, but we know that the loss is just the sum of the losses for each of the output nodes. So then using this same logic, we can observe that the total loss of the network for a single training sample is also a composition of functions. Now this particular observation of observing how the loss is a composition of functions is useful to us because now we can understand how to differentiate this loss. And remember, that's our objective going forward. We're taking the derivative of the loss with respect to the weights so that SGD can update the weights accordingly.
Now, if you've taken calculus, then you know that to differentiate a composition of functions, we use the chain rule. And that's what we're going to start doing in the next video. All right, so now we should understand the ways we can mathematically express the loss function of a neural network, as well as the input and the activation output of any given node within the network. Additionally, it should be clear now that the loss function is actually a composition of functions. And so to differentiate the loss with respect to the weights in the network, we'll need to use the chain rule. Going forward, we'll be using the observations that we learned here in the relatively heavier math that we'll be using with backprop. In the next video, we'll start to get exposure to this math. But before moving on to that one though, take the time to make sure you understand these observations that we covered in this video and why we'll be working with the chain rule to differentiate the loss function. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.